Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video in which we will go through what was covered in week three. So we looked at algebraic fractions and linear equations. So let's look first at algebraic fractions. Algebraic fractions are just fractions that have pronumerals or letters in them but they work the same way as normal fractions. So let's look first at simplifying algebraic fractions. So to simplify fractions, you divide the top and the bottom by their highest common factor. So for 8x and 12, the highest common factor is four. So I can divide the top by four, 8x divide four is 2x, as long as I divide the bottom by four, the golden rule of fractions. What you do to the top, you must do to the bottom. What you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So let's look at simplifying this one. This one's a lot more challenging. Sometimes to simplify, you may need to factorize. So this fraction here looks like it can't be simplified, but once we factorize, you'll see that it will. Now note, we can't just cross off x's. You can only cross off or cancel things that are being multiplied. So what I'm gonna do is start by factorizing the top. So 8x and negative 24 have a common factor of eight. So I put that out the front, so eight times X gives eight X, eight times negative three gives negative 24. So I'm gonna simplify the bottom, which is a quadratic. So it's a quadratic with three terms. So I need to find two numbers that multiply to nine and add to negative six. So both of those numbers are negative three. So on the bottom, I can write X minus three times X minus three. So I can simplify this by crossing off an x minus three. I can't just cross off the x because it's not being multiplied, but I can cross off the whole x minus three because it's being multiplied. And our final answer, we're just left with eight on the top and x minus three on the bottom. I can't simplify that any further. So let's now look at multiplying fractions. Here you just multiply the numerators, what's on top, and multiply the denominators, what's on the bottom. So 3a times 4a is 12a squared. 3 times 4 is 12, a times a is a squared, and five times seven is 35, and we're done. So let's look at this one here. So we can just multiply the tops. So five times 24 is 120, and then we add in the BC, and 12 times 25 is 300. Now, this can be simplified because there's a common factor. So if you just go to your calculator and put 120 over 300, it will simplify for you. It will tell you it's two over five, and we'll leave the BC up there and we're done. All right, let's look at division. So when you're dividing fractions, you flip the second fraction and make it a times. So for this one here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the first fraction alone. I'm gonna flip the second fraction and make it a times. And we know how to multiply fractions. We just multiply the tops, X times X, multiply the bottoms and we're done. So this one here is a little more complicated because we're also going to need to factorize. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the first fraction alone. Then I'm going to flip the next fraction, the second fraction, and I'm going to make it a times. So when you're multiplying fractions, you can cancel any common factors. So I can cross out the X and the X. You can cross out anything on the top that has a common factor with something on the bottom. Now, as I showed you before up here, sometimes you can simplify by factorizing. This thing here can be factorized. So 3X plus 6 can be factorized to 3 outside of X plus 2. So because I have the x plus 2 on the top in the bottom, it's being multiplied, I can just cross it out, my final answer is 3. Let's look now at adding and subtracting fractions. So adding and subtracting fractions is a little bit difficult because you can only add or subtract fractions when their denominators, bottom numbers, are equal. If the bottom numbers are not equal, before you add or subtract, you must make them equal. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, I want to change this denominator and this denominator in the fraction so that they're equal. So what should I make the denominator of each fraction? Well, that number that goes here is the lowest common multiple of these two. So the lowest number divisible by eight that's also divisible by five, and that's 40. 40 is the lowest number that divides by eight also divides by five. So to get from eight to 40, what I need to do is multiply this denominator by five. But if I multiply the bottom by five, I must multiply the top by five. 
what you do to the bottom of the fraction, you must do to the top. So on top here goes 5x. So to multiply from 5 to 40, I need to multiply this denominator by 8 to make it have a denominator of 40. So if I multiply the bottom by 8, I must multiply the top by 8. So 2x times 8 is 16x. So now we have the same denominator. You simply add the numerators. You add the tops, but you never add the bottoms. You just leave it exactly as it is. The final answer is 21x over 40. So let's look at this one that's a bit more difficult. So once again, denominators are not the same. The lowest common multiple of 4 and 12 is 12. So what I need to do is I need to make this fraction here have denominator 12. So if I multiply this denominator by 3, 4 times 3 will give me 12. But if I multiply the bottom by 3, I have to multiply the top by 3. So I'm just changing the first fraction. So when I multiply the top by 3, I have to multiply everything by 3. It's actually 3 times the whole lot of x minus 1 over 12. And I can leave the second fraction the same because it already has a denominator 12. So expanding the top, I get 3x minus 3 over 12, and I'm subtracting x plus 1. But the thing is, when I'm subtracting, I'm subtracting the whole lot. So as I said before, when the denominators are equal, you just add or subtract the top. So what I do is I go 3x minus x is 2x. Then I go negative 3, subtract 1 is negative 4. And then I have a 12 on the bottom. I never change the denominator. When I'm adding or subtracting fractions, you always keep the same denominator. So this one can be simplified further, but we're just going to leave it now as 2x minus 4 and go on to linear equations. All right, so linear equations, you know they're equations because they have an equal sign. So what we need to do is solve them. We need to find a value that I can substitute for the pro numeral, the letter that makes the statement true. So how do you solve them? How do you find that value? Well, you undo everything that's been done to the pro numeral in the opposite order to bid mass. So in this one here, x has been multiplied by negative 3, and this is a positive 10. 10 has been added. So the first thing I'm going to do here is subtract 10 from both sides. So 10 minus 10, they cancel each other out. I'm left with negative 3x equals 1 subtract 10 is negative 9. So now to get x by itself, x has been multiplied by negative 3. The way we undo timesing by negative 3 is by dividing each side by negative 3. So the golden rule of equations, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So timesing negative 3, dividing negative 3, cancel each other out, and I'm left with x is negative 9, divide negative 3, and I get positive 3. The reason this is the solution, if I substitute x for 3, I get 10 minus 9 equals 1. One, which is a true statement. So let's look at this one here. So here, x has been added to 2 first, then multiplied by 3, then divided by 4. So because dividing 4 is the last thing I did, it's the first thing I undo. It's like you put your shoes and socks on in the morning, you put your socks on first, then your shoes. But at night, you have to take off your shoes first because they're the last thing you put on. And so it is here. Dividing 4 is the last thing I put on, it's the first thing I need to undo. The way you undo dividing 4 is by timesing by 4. And remember, if you times one side of the equation by 4, you have to times the other side by 4. Divide 4 times 4 cancel each other out. So what I'm left with is 3 outside of x plus 2 is equal to negative 9 times 4, which is negative 36. So when you get an equation like this, it might be helpful to expand the brackets. So 3 times x and 3 times 2. So now this is an easy one to solve. We have x has been multiplied by 3, 6 is added to get negative 36. So adding 6 was the last thing done, so it's now going to be the first thing I undo. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. Plus 6, minus 6, cancel each other out. We're left with 3x equals negative 42. You can use your calculator for help. So I've got 3 times x equals negative 42. The way I undo timesing by 3 is dividing each side by 3. So 
times 3, divide 3, cancel each other out. I'm left with x equals negative 42 divided by 3 is negative 14. That is my final answer. So when you have an equation like this where x or the pronumeral is on both sides of the equation, first expand the brackets. And then what you need to do is get x to one side of the equation. So I have a 5x here and a negative 2x here. What you can do is subtract the x with the lowest number in front. So this one, x has a lower number in front. Negative 2 is less than 5. So what I can do is I can subtract negative 2x from both sides, which is the same as adding 2x to both sides. If I add 2x to this right-hand side of the equation here, it will get rid of the x on the right-hand side because 2x, subtract 2x, they undo each other. But if you add 2x to the right-hand side, you must add it to the left-hand side. So 5x plus 2x is 7x. Now, of course, I can't add negative 60 and 2x. They're not like terms, so I'm going to leave the negative 60 alone. So I get this. So now it's an easy one to solve. What I'm going to do is add 60 to both sides. The way I undo subtracting 60 is to add 60. And then I'm going to divide each side by 7. And my final answer is x equals 8. All right, last thing we need to look at is some worded problems. So when you're trying to use equations to solve worded problems, follow these steps. Step one, define a variable. That means let x be the thing you're trying to find, then form an equation, then solve as normal. So let's look at this question. James paid $18 per hour, $5 for each pair of sunglasses he sells. Today he sold four pairs, earned $119. For how many hours does he work? So we are asked how many hours he works. So our first step is to let x be what we're trying to find. We let x be the number of hours worked. So now we're going to form an equation. We're going to rewrite all of this information using just mathematical symbols and numbers. So he gets paid $18 per hour. So $18 times the number of hours he works plus he earned $5 for each pair of sunnies. He earned $20 for selling four pairs of sunnies and he ended up getting 119. So now we simply solve this equation. We're going to subtract 20 from both sides and then divide by 18. 99 divided by 18 is 5.5. He worked for five and a half hours. So let's try this one, which is quite a bit harder. Daniel is four years older than his brother. 10 years ago, Daniel was triple his brother's age. How old is Daniel now. So once again, we start by defining a variable. So in this question, we were asked for Daniel's age. So we're going to let x be the age Daniel is now. So what we need to do is form an equation here. So we also have information about Daniel's brother's age. So the age of Daniel's brother, we don't want to let that be y because we don't know how to solve equations that have two pronumerals. What we need to do is we need to write the age of Daniel's brother in terms of x. So if Daniel is x years old and he's four years older than his brother, then x minus four is the age of his brother. So let's turn this information that 10 years ago, Daniel was triple his brother's age. Let's turn that into an equation. So if Daniel is X now, he was X minus 10, 10 years ago. Whatever his age is now, you just subtract 10. That's how old he was 10 years ago. So that age was triple, so three times the brother's age 10 years ago. So if the brother's age is X minus four, then 10 years ago, he was x minus 14. We just take x minus 4 and subtract 10. So now we've got an equation to solve. So as I said previous slide, when you have x on both sides of the equation, start by expanding brackets. And then we need to get x to one side of the equation. You do that by subtracting the x with the lowest number in front of. So the number in front of this, the coefficient of this x is just 1. The coefficient of this x is 3. This has a lower coefficient, so we subtract it from both sides. x minus x is 0. So on the left-hand side, we've just got negative 10. On the right-hand side, 3x minus x. So we get 2x minus 42. Now we're going to add 42 to both sides. We get 32 equals 2x 
divide each side by 2, we get x equals 16. So Daniel is 16, his brother is 12. So 10 years ago, Daniel was 6, his brother was 2. All right, thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.